Wow, that was a nice surprise. It's a good group of boys. We're all gonna die together out here. <laughs> you shouldn't have come here. Hey there guys, how are you? It's me, the Canadian Movie Buff, with a review of Kong Skull Island. What happens is that this government agent, played by John Goodman, gathers a group of scientists and explorers for an expedition to this mysterious island. A squadron of soldiers pulling out from Vietnam sign on to escort them and provide protection. They start dropping bombs, only to anger the monster ape himself, King Kong. After a rampage, the group gets separated and now they must make it to the other side of the island before Kong, or any other monsters, get them first. This was a movie I have been interested in since it was first announced. A King Kong flick that takes place entirely on the island? Sold! Now after all the casting calls, the production news, the Comic Con previews, and some reasonable doubt, I can say that this is one monster movie you'll go apes about. With a movie like this, you can expect some pretty big names attached to it. Such stars include John Goodman, Samuel Jackson, Tom Hiddleston, Brie Larson, Toby Kebbo, Corey Hawkins, Jin Chan, Jason Mitchell, John C. Riley. Okay, who wasn't in this movie? But what's great about it is that it doesn't feel overcrowded or that certain characters didn't get enough screen time. On that note, the actors you do see do give off a sense of familiarity. You got Hawkins and Mitchell back together after playing Dr. Dre in Easy e Toby Kebbo is in another ape-related movie. John Goodman showing up in a monster movie nearly a year after his last one. And Nick Fury, Loki, and Captain Marvel all on the base screen together before Infinity War. It's nuts to see all these actors carry a nearly two-hour movie without it falling apart. On the other end of the spectrum, we have of Jordan Vart Roberts in the director's chair, whose only other credit is The Kings of Summer. It's nice when a big studio like Warner Brothers give any directors the helm to a major project, especially since this is a massive part of its monsterverse. Vart Roberts is able to show to us what he showed those who watched The Kings of Summer. He knows how to make an entertaining movie. Every time there's a monster on screen or there's two monsters duking it out, he lets us see it all in its glory. There's no close-ups or jump cuts, you get to see everything in its wide-shot glory. Now while part of it does come down to the writers, whose backgrounds include Jurassic World, Godzilla, and Nightcrawler, in the end it's Foot Robert's movie. And what we get is some awesome eye candy with an interesting story to go along with it. King Kong looks amazing in this movie, and it's pretty clear that he's the star of the show. Yet, like many monsters slash giant robot movies, its problem is the human aspect. At first, we see these different characters get recruited, and we sort of get a feel for them. Then, when we get on the island, they all fall into tokenism. We have the handsome rogue, the crazy guy who turns out to be right, the nosy one with a million questions, the high ranking officer who's hellbound on revenge, and the castaway who knows all the ins and outs of the place. I didn't have a problem with any of the performances, it's just that the character arcs were as predictable as you can get. Once the third act hits, you can pretty much guess what's going to happen, who's going to make it to the end, and how it happens. There's this one point in the movie where they're fighting off skull crawlers. It sounds stupid now that I say. And soldiers are getting picked off one by one, but only the ones you had pegged as the ones who were going to die. You know, the expendables. No, not those guys, but that would have made a more interesting movie. When it's broken down bit by bit, Kong Skull Island is more or less what you expect. It had an interesting premise which it delivered on, it had some great visual effects and some awesome monster fights. Plenty of screen time was given to Kong. It's not like in Godzilla where the monster was just like, Rawr, I'm Godzilla, and I'm gone. Vod Robbers knows exactly what we as an audience want from a creature feature, and he gives it to us. Even if the humans aren't anything special, but then again, it could be a fault on the writer's part. After all, two of them have experience with writing movies with giant monsters and underdeveloped characters. Despite that, it is a good popcorn flick with a few sparks of smart in it. And it's worth seeing at least once in theaters, maybe in IMAX if you want the full effect. Alright, that's my review of Kong Skull Island. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Leave your answer by commenting down below. And as I'm recording this, I want to say that this is my first anniversary of being on YouTube. Alright, maybe not YouTube, but Canadian Movie Buff Reviews. Even though I'm just a small channel, I love doing what I'm doing. Even though my life is kind of busy, I do like to take some time aside and make these videos for you. Thanks again for watching, and as always, this is the Canadian Movie Buff saying, I hope you had a fantastic weekend at the movies, and here's to many more years. See ya!
make sure you stick around until after the credits, because there will be a special surprise for you at the end.